So you want to learn how to paint this rather looking famous painting in under 10 minutes? Well, in today's video, we're going to show you a step-by-step -step process and how to do exactly that coming up. Hi again there guys, Emma here from Paint and Pino giving you some top tips for all things art and design and today we're going to do a step-by-step -step guide on how to produce this rather famous looking painting. So it is based on Monet's Sunset in uh, Venice, but we're going to show you a few little simple basic tricks that will help you produce this painting. Now just before we start today's painting I just want to draw your attention to two areas in particular when we look at his painting in more detail. One is the actual textural quality of the painting, so that's going to be achieved through individual brush strokes. The other one is the use of light. Impressionism is all about the use of light, so that's going to be achieved by actually mixing the paint and effect onto the canvas. Monet! Do you know his work? Of course. Look at his use of colour here, isn't he great? I know, it's extraordinary. So the brushes we're using today, we've just gone with the three. We've got this small fine detail size 6 brush, we've got just a simple round head size 10 and we've gone with a larger painter's brush. Colours wise just simply black and the white and then we've gone with the warm variations of the primary colours. Now normally I always insist on priming the canvas even though the canvases that I've bought have already been primed. However this time because the actual colour I'm putting on here now it's almost as though it is priming so just to recap the reason you prime a canvas is if you imagine the actual fabric itself is very absorbent. If you haven't primed it recently, then everything that you paint just gets absorbed and lost. So you lose an element of color into the canvas. Now, of course, with impressionism, it's all about color. But all I'm doing here is simply just laying down the background so that we're not having to start from a white canvas. I'm just giving the basic color structure to the painting. And then it means when we start to do our marks in a moment, then they'll start to show up a, little, a lot brighter. So just blending in some of the basic colours here. Don't be too scared about going straight to the blue and to the yellow. You're going to get a hint of green coming through there, which is not the natural colour we're looking for in terms of the sky and the ocean. But it's, again, we're just putting the background down at this stage. So pretty loosely on. I'm not too worried about any detail. Just keeping those wrists straight. It's this technique I always try and teach when you're trying to blend colours together is that you don't want to have those rainbow wrists. Try and keep them as straight as you can. And then we're just going to finish off with a bit of the, the warm red in the middle. And then again, we're just obviously working really quickly. The quicker you work when it comes to blending paint, the easier it is, because obviously when you're working wet on wet, it's going to blend much, much quicker than if you're working slowly and the whole painting starts to dry. Okay, so there's the background colours. Now, you know, this at the end of the day is a 10 minute painting. So I'm trying to show you guys how easy on how quick some of the techniques can be here. So obviously we've got that background colour. Ideally, we'd let it dry so that it's going to work on a bit more quickly. But we're just going to go straight on with the wet paint. So I'll have to go quite thick with some of the colours. So I'm just blending in some of the, the yellow into the blue now. So you're getting some of that green coming through but it's all about the mark making at this stage. So I'm doing a bit of cross hatching, which means simply doing almost like little crosses. So you can see those individual brush strokes coming through. So I'm just using the round head brush here. This is the brush I'm gonna use for the majority of the painting at this stage, just to build up that color. I always suggest that you don't rinse a brush with water because with acrylic, you don't want it to get too wet. The wetter it becomes, the more um, difficult it is to maintain that strong colour. So always have a tissue on hand so that you can clean off any excess paint rather than using water. If you do have to like wash your brush at any stage, make sure that you're always keeping it nice and dry because without that you won't get these gorgeous bright white colours coming through for example because it's just going to make it all blend too much. We don't want to over blend. You know, we're, we're trying to achieve something which with the greatest respect, Monet spent his entire life sort of perfecting the art of Impressionist or Impressionism. So just to recap for anyone that isn't aware, so Impressionism was formed back in the 19th century in France. And of course, at the time, it was a very 
dramatic removal from what was the known, where painters had sort of perfected realism. But, you know, this was a stage in life where they wanted to start expressing just their, the way they interpreted light. It's all about light. So, you know, Monet rarely used anything that was a tertiary colour, so browns, earthy colours. He always went with the strong, bold primary colours and then would mix them onto the canvas itself. So that's what we're trying to recreate. It's going to be a heightened version, so my colours are probably going to be a lot more dramatic than they would have been for Monet. But, you know, we're not copying, we're, we're being inspired by. So it's our own interpretation of, as it were. So these marks down here I'm making now, guys, we're going into the water. So because you're going to have more of an element of reflection, I'm keeping my marks a little bit more um, horizontal and a little bit more uh, sort of consistent because I want to get that sense of uh, reflection in the water going across. Whereas at the top here, obviously, we're going a little bit more vibrant, more dynamic. So much more of an element of cross-hatching in the sky. So just going back to Monet and his technique, there's a video that's actually recently popped up on YouTube. I will leave a link below for you guys if you want to watch this because it's a remarkable video. It's one of the few videos of um, Monet himself actually working back in 1914. And, you know, obviously it's an old grainy black and white film but there's so many things which as an artist is fascinating to see how he works and one of the first things I was very aware of is that when he's painting he's actually standing at 90 degrees to the subject matter so he was doing the um, Givenchy the very famous uh, sort of garden scene and you know as a painter you want to be looking at your subject matter more often than you're looking at your canvas in an ideal world whereas he literally has to glance over to his right at a 90 degree angle so I just think that's clearly his way of showing that that's his way of interpreting the painting you know if you're staring at detail you're almost going to become too obsessed with making it a perfect painting whereas he is literally giving a hint in his eye what he remembers in terms of the colors the other thing I thought was fascinating too was just his lack of brushes that he actually uses. He only had four brushes, all very similar in size. Um, you know, and so don't ever be afraid that you've got to have a huge collection of brushes when you're creating a painting. As long as the, you know, the equipment makes you feel comfortable, as you can see, I've just gone with the three brushes today, then you're going to feel more confident in yourself. So you can see I've just put some of that detail. Now I have gone with black. It's... I suppose in an ideal world that I've gone with more of a navy blue because I'm trying to work quite quickly today. I haven't got time to be mixing that dark colour. So again, it's going to be a bit more of a dynamic contrast, but that's okay. This is my interpretation of his painting. So we're just putting some of that reflection through in the water now. Again, keeping that horizontal mark making all the way through. The trick with your brush, guys, is you don't want to push down too hard. If you push down into the canvas, you're going to mix all the colours together and you're going to lose those individual colours. So because Impressionism is all about light, I know a lot of Impressionist paintings were a series of works. So they would be taking the same image, but in the morning, afternoon, evening, and you could see the contrasting colours against the same subject matter. So you don't want to have something that's sort of muddy or that's blending in too quickly. So if you push down with your brush too hard, you're going to mix all the colours together too quickly. So you actually want to be quite light handed with this so that you get those individual marks coming through. So you'll notice I've gone with the fine detail brush now just to work a little bit more of that uh, detail area. But I say detail, it's not, again, it's an impressionist style. We're not going to try and create a perfect image of Venice. We're just giving a hint of really what Monet saw, which was that you know, reflection of, of somewhere. So you can see here where those colours are starting to, to mix a little bit more subtly. So it's really a case of now just working layers. The more layers you can actually work in this style of painting, the more effective it's actually going to look. Usually one of the hardest decisions as an artist is knowing when to stop, but when you're working in an impressionist style, it's almost the opposite. <laughs> like the more the more colours you can add, as long as you're not over blending, the more effective your painting is going to be. And there you have it.
So there you have it guys. I hope you've enjoyed today's video on how to produce a painting just like this in under 10 minutes. The whole point of these videos are to show you how easy painting can actually be with some just very basic instructions. If you have enjoyed the video, then please do hit that like button below as it really does help our channel. And if you'd like to see some more weekly top tips just like this one, hit that subscription button just below. Alrighty guys, we'll see you next time. Happy painting.